That's one of my favorites every year. You know, I'll talk with Bregman, I think, after the 17 series, and he's like, hey, let's run this back every year, you know, and they got a good squad over there, competitive, got a lot of fire, great pitching staff, and um, it felt like a playoff atmosphere, you know, especially those first two games, even the last one, them coming back. Um, no, it's fun. You know, we always enjoy going in there and, and playing in that environment. But now you guys are having a lot of fun back and forth with each other, it looks like. Yeah, that's just part of the game. You know, we're having fun. You know, they got a great team, and, um, you know, looking forward to seeing them down the stretch. Aaron, there's the All-Star game for you. You have something different, something special. This All-Star game? Yeah, every, every All-Star game, every situation is always a little unique. You know, I've never been here to Denver. Um, you know, getting the chance to be here with Garrett Cole, you know, for the first time is, is pretty cool as teammates. Um, you know, so I'm just looking forward to seeing all the guys, meeting some guys I haven't really got a chance to talk with, you know, see, see some guys on the NL side I haven't talked to, and um, just enjoy the whole thing. You know, not doing the Derby this year either is, is going to be nice to sit back and, you know, watch those guys do their thing. So it's, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Um, oh, he's a once in a lifetime talent. Um, to be able to do what he does on the mound, you know, throwing the upper 90s, you know, great feel for all his pitches, can pitch, you know, deep into games, and then to come up and hit three homers in a game. It's uh, I've never seen anything like it, you know, so I'm excited to, you know, kind of see him up close and personal and uh, be rooting him on in the Derby for sure. Um, you know, I hope you guys are watching and be cheering on, on Shohei. He's going he's gonna to definitely put on a show tonight. When you know your way around the Derby, what are you most looking forward to seeing tonight? Is it Shohei? Is it just the raw display of power? Maybe someone hitting it out of the ballpark? Yeah, I'm looking for someone definitely here in Colorado hit one out of the stadium. You know, that's uh, that's going to be something I'm looking forward to. I've never hit here before, you know, so I really don't know how well the ball flies. But uh, hopefully we got some juice balls and uh, no humidifier and, you know, let the guys go to work. It's going to be fun. Well, that's kind of interesting. You've never hit here before. Are you a little jealous that maybe, like, you, would, you maybe want to take a few hacks in the home run derby, see how, you, how far you can hit it? Oh man, you know I'm gonna enjoy my time in BP. You know I'll get, I'll do my little home run derby during BP. But no, they got a good group. You know all the guys that are in this derby this year, they got, they got power. They can hit it to all fields. So I think we'll be seeing a lot of guys hitting some oppo homers, pool side homers. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a fun night for sure. You said you've never been to Colorado before. You know, I've only stopped in here like flying. You know, stopping at the airport and connect on a flight, but never been here in Denver. Never checked anything out. It's it's been great so far. Is there anything you want to see while you're here or experience while you're here? Man, I wish I had time. You know, they kind of got us running around like crazy, you know, during the during this all-star break. So um, I think my family might be doing some things, but for me, I'm kind of locked in on, you know, what I got to do here at the stadium. Do you, you, know, you guys are in now. Uh, do you allow yourself to let loose and beat you know, talk to you a little bit too? Yeah, you know, the first couple of rounds, you got to kind of make sure the swing's right. But then, you know, those last couple of rounds, I might, you know, if I'm warmed up properly, I might let it loose and see what we got. Yeah, oh yeah, we'll see. We'll see, but... You know, it's it's tough to bet against Shohei, you know, but I think my man Trevor Story, you know, he's hit here, he knows the environment, he knows what this altitude will do to you. I think he kind of, he'll probably pace himself a little better than most guys. So I think it might be a little showdown between those two. Aaron, who's your favorite player to watch currently? Are you doing, do you have to do anything here other than sit here? Wow. Um, Sandra Bogarts, um, Devers, you know, they're pretty, Pretty good pair over there with the Red Sox. Um, you know, I love watching Bo Bichette hit. You know what Vladdy's doing over there with um, with the Blue Jays as well. Um, seeing Shohei come to New York, I think he had a homer in like every game. I felt like um, he's. You know, those are kind of the top guys right now. You know, I'm gonna get a chance to see Tatis. You know, haven't really. You know, I talked to him a little bit, but haven't. You know, watched him play a lot. So it's gonna be exciting to see him do his thing too. And are you looking forward to facing tomorrow? Who am I looking forward to facing? No, oh, I don't. I don't even know. I don't even know who they're throwing yet. Um, who's in it? So we'll see. We'll see. Aaron, what is it like? Uh, you had a pretty intense weekend in Houston. Obviously, and yesterday was a tough, a tough loss for you guys. Do you look at it as a little bit of a, a missed opportunity? Did that kind of kick the momentum a little bit? The way yesterday went. Or? Uh, it doesn't change the momentum. You know, we still won the series. We definitely wanted to. You know. In the in the first half with the sweep, you know we had every opportunity, especially going to the ninth, seven to two. Um, but then even looking back throughout the game as hitters, you know we had we left quite a few guys on base. Uh, which looking back, I think that's what that's what cost us the game. You know, no matter what happened in the ninth, you know leaving 
felt like we left 14 guys on base. You know, that's what really cost us a game. But uh, the momentum, no. You know, we're past couple series, we've really been turning it on, turning it up, and um, you know, I feel, we're all feeling pretty good going to this break and getting ready for the second half. You've been pretty open about your frustrations, like crazy first half. Like, just, just the core, just the major. But you feel, do you feel like that's behind you in terms of that more closer way? Like, do you feel like you guys are in a better place? <laughs> Well, you know, I wasn't expecting eight runs in the in the ninth inning either. You know, so that's baseball. You know, baseball, you're going to have the ups and downs. You're going to have the crazy moments. Um, but I think, you know, like like you kind of said, the past couple series, we've kind of been, I feel like, turned the corner. You know, there's still going to be some crazy games where stuff like that happens or we don't hit or the pitchers don't do something that's going to happen. But um, as long as we continue to have keep having great at-bats as hitters, the pitchers keep doing their job, which they've been doing. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to what we can do in this second half. It's going to be a fun one. Aaron, I know a bunch. Aaron, I know a bunch of players have kind of chosen not to come here to Colorado. Is that something that you ever considered? No. Why is it important for you to be here this week? You know, for me, you, know, you never know how many opportunities you're going to get like this. You know, for me, it's a blessing to be here. You know, it's a blessing to represent the Yankees here at the All Star Game and you know, be by my teammates, um, and especially with the fans voting me in. You know, I got to put on a show for them. You know, it's. You know, I, like I said, I don't know if I'll ever come back to an All Star Game. You never know what the future holds, but it's. Uh, it's, it's always a special honor for me to come here, spend it with my family, you know, have some downtime to kind of you know, relax and rest and get ready for the next you know, second half. There are millions of kids around the world are going to be watching this game. What is the message that you can send to them that they are dreaming to one day become you? Uh, the message is keep, you know, keep striving, keep reaching for your goals. You know, because I was once that kid watching these games with my family on TV. You know, like wow, like you know, these are my favorite players, favorite stars. You know, you know I wish one day I could make it there. You know, and you know, you know a little kid coming out of Linden, California, you know, a little farming community. You never, never expected this. You know, so all those kids around the world, you know, keep working hard. You know, you keep working hard. The sky's the limit. If you can go back in time, talk to that kid, Raymond, you. Just don't give up. You know, enjoy every moment. Um, I think that's one thing: is enjoy every moment, enjoy those times as a kid. And then when things get tough, either in high school, in college, when things aren't going your way, or even in the minor leagues, things aren't going your way. Um, just keep fighting, keep pushing through because, you know, everything you're going through is preparing you for, you know, what you asked for, you know, so those tough times are just preparing you for the future and, you know, what's in store. Thank you so much. What's up, Aaron? You're welcome. Um, Caroline has the highlights. We did a poll. What's harder? Half-court shot, 100-mile-per-hour fastball, being able to make contact. The half-court shot one is being harder. Can you explain why that's definitely not true? Or maybe you do agree with it. So. No, I think trying to hit 100 mile an hour fastball is is a lot tougher. You know, you got is you don't know if it's gonna be at your head, if it's gonna be at the knees, over the plate, anywhere. You know, you give me you give me a couple of buckets of balls, I think I can I can drain a couple half court shots. I'll see it. And favorite basketball team, favorite basketball player, and who you like in the finals? Wow, um, I like the Clippers, Lakers. You know, kind of the LA teams are some of my favorites. You know, I kind of rooted on the. Rooted on Brooklyn, you know, this past playoffs, you know, especially being in New York and the team they got. Um, you know, KD and LeBron, those are my two favorites right now. You know, they're doing something special. Um, just two super talented guys. Uh, they're doing great things for the sport, too, as well. Um, you know, for the finals. And the Bucks beat my beat the Nets, so I got to be rooting for the Suns. All right, thanks, Aaron. You're having won the Derby in 2017, and knowing it's an altitude tonight and the timing of it all, um, what would be your advice to the participants and how to kind of pace yourself? Um, it's tough, you know, especially when you're in the moment and the drilling's pumping, the crowd's getting going. It's kind of tough to kind of pace yourself because you're seeing the clock tick down. You know that the guy probably you're going up against might hit. 10, 15, 20 home runs, you don't know what he's going to hit. So um, you try to push it as long as you can. But I think the most important thing is that timeout, you know, using the timeout at the right time to kind of give you a break in the middle so then you're ready to go for that. You know, if you just kind of break it up in, you know, the two parts, for like the two minutes, whatever they get, that's that's the way to do it. Are you sharing your favorite for tonight? Uh, you know, I was kind of talking about Shohei and, you know, Story, the kind of the two I'm, I'm looking. Is there an advantage to having field for Trevor Story. I mean, a lot of people are talking about Shohei Otani or Joey Gallo and how they get the ball. It might come from a lefty being the winner, but what advantage does it give for Trevor? I think the advantage is having the crowd, you know, especially playing in your home stadium. You got the crowd, you know, 
cheering you on. I think that's going to give him maybe that little extra boost to, you know, take it to the, to the finish line. Final thing you mentioned, Shohei Otani. What's the experience like on the other side? You've seen it up close and personal um, in the batter's box, and then you've obviously seen it from him hitting. What is it like? <laughs> it's tough to describe Shohei. You know, it's uh, like I've been saying, you know, the, what he does on the mound, um, e even his demeanor. You know, he's, a, he's got that quiet confidence. Um, you know, he's a guy that knows he belongs, knows he belongs, um, plays with a lot of heart, plays with a lot of hustle. He's, you know, he, with his size and his power, he's usually the fastest guy on the field too, which is something that's pretty rare. So he's, uh, quite a talent and, you know, it's an honor to be here with him and watch him do his thing. Aaron, do you know how much work Aaron, goes into being a hitter? Could you imagine also having to do the work necessary like he does to be an all-star pitcher? Yeah, you know, it's crazy. I, I, I tried doing both in college, you know, during our fall ball, I would, Pitch, I would hit, go back and forth. I'd do the running, conditioning with the pitchers, throw with the pitchers, and I come in and try to hit, and I was exhausted. And that was just me doing it in college, and you know, on such a smaller scale. And you know, for him to do that at the major league level, trying to get out major league hitters, and then also facing the best pitchers in the game, um, it's tough. But he's always got a smile on his face. It doesn't seem like anything bothers him. Um, he, he's made for this, you know. So I'm excited to see. I want to see him do this for the next 20 years here in the league. You know, it'll be something special. Oh, as, as a hitter, you know, what I saw him do at Yankee Stadium, you know, it felt like we're trying to pitch around him, but if any ball got anywhere near the strike zone, you know, that's the one he deposited in the seats. You know, I saw a couple fly over my head, and our pitchers made great pitches on him. You know, it wasn't like they were just kind of serving him over the middle. There were pitches on the corner, pitches up and in, and he just still was able to get the barrel on it, and it was <laughs> impressive to watch. Aaron, could you explain again for the Colorado baseball fans why you're not participating? Yeah, I already won one, you know, so I'm kind of happy with the trophy I got at home. Um, I think it's time for somebody else to win one. You know, I've never hit here before, and, um, you know, I, I just wasn't just wasn't my thing this year, I guess, you know. But I'm excited for the guys that are in this year. It's a great opportunity for them to showcase their power, showcase their talent, and, you know, put on a show for the fans. Oh, yeah. You know, I didn't see the Maldonado thing. Uh, somebody talked about it. Um, I did see, you know, after the game, they're ripping off his jersey and everything. That's fun. You know, he just hit a walk-off homer, you know, to win the game. You know, that's, that's big time. You know, you do whatever you want on there. You know, you can celebrate. You can walk around the bases. So, it's all part of the game, you know. Aaron, the level that you guys have taken to between you and Houston, that rivalry is really kind of taken off. I mean, the, the series this weekend was pretty intense. Is it to a level now that you, I mean, has it eclipsed like the Red Sox rivalry for you guys? I mean, it's really, it's not an interdivisional, obviously, but the intensity and are you think you'd even say animosity between the two sides is, is up there, it seems like. Yeah, I think that's what happens when you get two, you know, good ball clubs that want to win and have a desire to win, and you know we have a pass to playing each other in big games in the postseason. You know, you're going to have that that type of energy, you know, and um, you know, the Red Sox series still is. Our, you know, I feel like those are our rivals, you know, especially playing them in the division and seeing them so much. You know, I think that's you know really our true rivals. But um, you know, it's, it's been a been a fun series over the years. You know, playing against Houston. I know somebody asked you on the weekend about being teammates with some of the Astros at this All-Star game, if it came down to that, none of them came. <laughs> so, I mean, how do you, what do, what do you make What do you make of that? I mean, you guys showed up, uh, they didn't come, and everybody has their own reasons, but are you relieved that you don't have to have them as teammates and think about that, or what's your, what's your kind of take? No, I wouldn't say relieved, you know, mm -hmm. I just, it's part of it. They got their priorities, you know, they need to heal up, get ready, you know, they got family stuff. Um, injuries, anything like that, you know, they're just, you know, trying to play it smart and do what's best for them and the team, you know, so I, I really got nothing, you know, that's, that's their choice, you know, so whatever they want to do. Was it that or the moves that they made? <laughs> hey, you said it, not me, no, man. I, I, don't, I don't. It is my question. I'm yeah, asking. yeah, I'm not, I'm not too sure, you know, I'm not, I'm not in their shoes. I'm not, I don't know what they would go through or what they would hear, um, you know, but like I said, I think they made the best decision for, you know, for themselves, their families, and you know, personal reasons. It probably would have been the loudest booze ever at a All-Star game, right? I mean, this is where you celebrate the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
who knows? You know, I, I think the fans still got their opinions, but uh, you know, like I said, they took their personal reasons. And you know, All Star break, we only got three days, four days, or whatever, and we're playing 162 games, playing every single day. So, you know, I think they made the smart decision. You know, staying with their families, resting up, and you know, doing what they need to do for you know their second half. I know, I know, this legend, this guy's a legend. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know you. I know. I know you're a young guy. But I was gonna say, going to the All Star game. Still, it's still special, like every chance you get to be a part of this. Yeah, you know, I never want to take this moment for granted. You know, getting an opportunity to come here and celebrate with my family, celebrate with my friends, uh, most importantly, represent the Yankees and our fan base is something that, uh, you know, I never want to take for granted, never want to miss, you know, this opportunity, you know, so um, it, it still gives me chills, you know, being here, being around these legends, being around these guys that are going to be future Hall of Famers. Um, being around the coaches, everything. It's a special opportunity that, you know, it's, it's tough to describe it. And um, no, I'm looking forward to it once again. Thanks, Aaron. Hey, good to see you guys. You won the Major League Home Run Derby 2017, but also the college one in 2010. I'm curious, what was your go-to bat at President's Day? Wow. For, well, for the, you know, for the Derby, I used, uh, they kind of let us use any metal bat we wanted to. And at the time, the old, like, stealth, like, orange stealth, was uh, it was kind of outlawed at the time, but um, thank you. But um, they let us bring that back, so I used the orange style. Yeah, the, yeah, the BSRs. Yeah, yeah, you just got to touch those things and they go. I would, I'd like to see a couple guys. I'd like to see Joey Gallo with one of those here. Would you like to see a metal battle run derby? Yeah, it'd be fun. That'd be fun, especially here where the ball flies. You know, I'd, I'd see. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So it'd be, uh, be pretty cool to bring one of those back. Thank you. You come back to the All Star after three years. Did you miss this event? Say that one more time. You come back to the All Star game after three years of Did you, did you miss this, this game? This event? Yeah. Oh yeah. I always. You know, this is. Like I said, a special opportunity, you know, to represent the Yankees and rep represent our fan base and, and everybody here. And getting a chance to be along here with my teammates is, is something special. And um, yeah, I miss it. You know, it's always a great opportunity to see a lot of guys that, you know, you, you, you face, you know, once or twice. You see them in a passing, you know, you don't really get a chance to talk with them and meet them. But this is, we're surrounded by so many great guys here and it's uh, such a blessing. Yeah. How does it feel to have now Shohei Otani as your teammate for this time? Wow. Um, I'm excited to see him go to work. You know, I think he's starting the All-Star game, which is going to be something pretty cool. And then I hope he's batting third or fourth for us in the lineup. He's um, he's definitely going to put on a show. And I know in the Derby and even in the game. One last one uh, about our Mexican recess, the Yankees. How is he doing? Uh, Sessa is he's doing great. You know, he's one of those guys that I I can always depend on coming out of the bullpen. Um, doesn't matter what the score is, what the situation is. I know he's going to come in and get the job done. And you know, he's a workhorse. You know, I feel like we call on his name every other game, if every game. You know, he comes in there and gives us some strong outings, and uh, it, it's been a pleasure getting a chance to play with him over the years. Thank you. Everybody. You're welcome. Were you, were you surprised that, when you found out that Shohei was going to start the game? Was I surprised when he, I found out he's going to start the game? Uh, not really. You know, based on the type of pitcher he is and the type of player he is, you know, I was I was hoping he'd he'd start the game or do something. You know, it's it's just so impressive. Like like I said, like he's pitching during the season, he's hitting every single day, and then for him to come here and do the derby, start the game, be hitting for us, it's uh it's just incredible what this what this young man's doing. And you have to face him. And we don't have to face him. Yeah, I think a lot of guys in our lineup are happy we're not having to face him. We have to kind of watch him go to work on some other guys. Thank you. Uh, how deep do you think he can go? In, 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 in well, I, I think he can take it all the way to the finals and win it, you know, and I'm hoping I can see a couple 500-foot bombs from him uh, consistently. I want to see some oppo ones. I see him pull some, and uh, looking forward to it. And you have some time with him in the clubhouse and back out. Are there any questions or, uh, like, Stuff you want to talk, talk to him? Yeah, I, I briefly kind of talked to him and, you know, said hello, said congrats. You know, you represent the game so well. And, you know, I, I got a couple questions to ask him about hitting, man, because he's, you know, he's the one guy that I've watched the swing a lot. Um, watch his mechanics. They're, <laughs> they're perfect, you know. So I just want to kind of ask him his approach and what he kind of does in the box. It's something special. I'm curious, who would you say the face of the game is right now? No, it, it's it's tough to you know vote against Mike Trout. You know, a guy that's I think been the best player in the game and the face of the game since he got called up as a rookie. Um, you know, I'm kind of sad he's not here right now. I know he's dealing with an injury, but you know, it's it's tough to not say Mike Trout. You know, you also have you know Fernando Tatis. You know, you got Vladdy Jr. What he's doing with the Blue Jays. Um, you know, there's quite a few guys that I think represent this game and represent this league. You know, the right way. I'm curious, you talked about how 
you know, showcase yeah, like here. They're doing so much. Together. And he yeah, mentioned like how he knows he's, he's going to be like really tired, but people are really looking how forward to it. Here. How important is it for someone like him to sort of give the fans what they want? To sort of, you know what I mean? Like, like help grow the game and take on that responsibility. Because I know that's something you've done in your career. Yeah, no, it's, um, I think he's, he's going to take that burden on pretty well. You know, he's a guy that, he's a performer. Uh, he's one of the best in the game. And, you know, like I said, he's going to continue to grow the game and, and just grow the reach. You know, I, I know there's a lot of probably a lot of you know, young kids out there in Japan or all around the world that are watching him and want to grow up and be just like him. And, um, you know, he's, he's doing it the right way. That's all I got to say. Why is it important to have a successful two-way player? Like, do you think it changes what people think about baseball? Well, I just think it opens up more doors for more possibilities for different guys. You know, different guys that are maybe in high school or college and want to continue to do that or, you know, give him a shot. You know, if this guy can do it and do it at such a high level, I know he's kind of one. <laughs> he's, he's a one-on-one, -one, but there might be, you know, five or ten guys down the road that might try to do this or follow on his path and be successful like him. Congratulations. Yeah, you have a question. I only have one question. I only have one. Yeah. Um, good to see you too. Uh, obviously, after this all star game, you guys gotta go back and get focused on the second half of the season. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about that? Obviously, Boston is one of the toughest players. Like, how tough is that division? Yeah, we got, I think, one of the toughest divisions in baseball. And uh, yeah, we're kind of, I think we're gonna be playing the only game on Thursday, you know, after, you know, all star break. But uh, Red Sox have been doing their thing this year. You know, they've had our number um, at our place and even at their place. and. You know, they got a great pitching staff. You know, their lineup has always been, you know, one of the toughest and most feared, I think, lineups in, in baseball. You know, just like I said earlier with Bogarts and Devers, Martinez, all those guys in the middle of the order for them is, is tough. And they're also a scrappy team. You know, when it comes down to it, they're going to battle. They're going to fight. doesn't matter if they're down or up. They're going to, you know, find ways to get runs and get guys on base. So it's, uh, it's a series we always look forward to and um, you know, looking forward to it after this break. You're welcome. Good to see you. You know what it takes to hit a ball. What do you think about it to do that and also pitch a little like crew? That's why I say it's kind of tough to describe Shohei. You know, it's just, you know, I know what it takes, the preparation and the work and the maintenance it takes to, you know, fine tune a major league swing and to get ready to play every single day. But to not only do all that, all that preparation, what takes me all day before the game, now I add on top of that the stuff you got to do to keep your arm in shape, you know, keep your legs in shape, keep your stamina up to, to, to pitch, you know, 100 pitches and, you know, be reaching up to 99, 100 miles an hour. And it, it's just impressive. Like, that's why I say it's tough for me to try to sit here and talk about what he does because I, I can't do it. You know, I can't really, I can't step in his shoes and do it. So it's, um, it, it's, <laughs> he wows a lot of people, that's for sure. Yeah, when I did the Derby in 17, I couldn't even lift my arms the next day. You know, I was dead tired, you know, and I was kind of walking through BP the next day leading up to the game. You know, it was, it's exhausting, you know, especially going all the way to the finals and the amount of swings it takes, especially with the clock they got where it's a running clock of two minutes or whatever it is. You're just constantly swinging, swinging, swinging. So, um, you know, I want him to stay healthy. I want him to have some fun. And uh, I'm looking forward to see what he does in this. Like how many, how many days or weeks after that derby you would be capable of throwing a pitch to the major league game? Oh my goodness! It takes a couple weeks. I don't, I don't know, you know. So I'm excited, you know, especially if you're here in the altitude. I don't know how that'll affect him or affect everybody, but um, I'm, I'm looking forward to him putting on a show. He's gonna have some fun. I think he knows his body. He knows what he needs to do to, you know, you know, stay at the top of his game. Aaron, you, your team has made the playoffs all four of your full seasons. You've seen what you can and can't do for like 19 years. Are you a player team? Yeah, we've been a playoff team since since spring training. You know, with the type of talent we've had in this room, and um, you know, type of players we've called up or brought over. And you know, I'm just looking forward to the second half. We need to have a big second half. Um, but I think we're we're steering in the right direction. You know, we, this is baseball. You're gonna have those ups and downs. You're gonna have those bad moments. You're gonna have those stretches where things just aren't going your way. You know, but um, just as long as we're getting hot at the right time, I think we're, we're going to be in the right you know, position you know, going into September and October. Do you think that takes a punch well? Because you guys have taken a lot of punches this first half. Like, are you a team that can get back up? And why? 
Yeah, because, you know, we want to be in the playoffs. We want to win a World Series. And teams that win World Series and make it in the playoffs and have success, they get they get knocked down quite a few times throughout the year and even in the postseason, you know. So I think going through these tough times early in the year are just kind of preparing everybody for what's to come, you know, because like I said, every year we talk about we want to win a World Series. Well, guess what? You got to kind of you got to go through some got to go through some mud to to get there. You know, you got to get a little dirty. So it's, um, you know, it's, it's all part of it, you know. Aaron, you seem to care a lot about the kids and kind of giving back to the younger fans. How much does that matter to you and how much do you take that as a part of your responsibility as one of the faces of the league? Yeah, I just I want to try to leave this game better than you know how I found it. You know, this game's given me so much. It's given me so many opportunities for me and my family. Um, you know, any way I can, you know, have a chance to give back and have a chance to grow it. You know, that's what it's all about: growing this game and you know sharing it around the world, sharing this the love and joy I have for this. You know, I want to share that same love and and joy with with those kids around the world. You know, I want to see the next. You know, Shohei Itani and the next, you know, Mike Trout. I want to, you know, maybe if we can spark an interest, even if it's me tossing a ball to a fan, giving a kid a high five, an autograph, a wave, you know, that just sparks them to be like, you know what, I want to play baseball. I want to try this out. And that, that means the world to me. If that's true, then you seem like a guy who would really embrace this field of dreams. Have you thought about that at all? And what's it going to be like to play in the middle of a cornfield in Iowa? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. You know, being a fan of the movie and um, getting a chance to, you know, I hope I can have a chance to walk through the through the corn under the field. That'd be pretty cool. Um, but it, it's going to be a special day. I don't know how big. I think the stadium's going to hold maybe 5,000 people, which will be pretty intimate. And um, I'm looking forward to. It. I wish we were playing more than one game there. I wish it was a whole series. But this one game is going to be something special that um, you know I'll never forget. I'll make that walk. It is really, it's really cool. It's pretty special. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. You said it was a little chilly the other night. I'm guessing it's, this is not so chilly for you. Oh, right? this ain't bad. This ain't bad. They ain't got no roof here. You know, uh, but. Uh, you know, talk about the broad state of the game. You know, obviously there's people out there who think that the pace of play is too, you know, too slow, too many strikeouts. Uh, do you think those problems need to be addressed by baseball, or do you think those problems are just, they're overblown? It's just the loudest voice in the room. With like what issues are you talking about? Well, just like there's too many strikeouts in the game, the game's too slow, you know, trying if you want to grow that game with a younger audience who are talking about, you know, trying to attract those young kids back into the sport, that those things need to be addressed. The ball needs to be put in the play more often, maybe get rid of the shift, uh, whether it's a limit on you know, relief pitchers, you know, yeah. are, are those things that need to be talked about with Major League Baseball? Man, I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind no shift. There's been a couple of balls I felt like I hit that should have snuck through the infield or done something that, you know, there's a guy standing right there behind second base or doing something like that. Um, yeah, there's a couple things, man, but um, it's, it's going to take, I think, a couple of years to kind of work through those things, you know, because like a lot of teams are built a certain way or the game's kind of built a certain way right now. It's going to take quite a few years to kind of try to figure that out and get it to the right way. Because like I said, I want to grow the game. I want it to grow a bigger audience. And um, I think there are a couple of things around the league that, you know, need to change. And I wouldn't mind that shift getting changed. <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of players here, they said the one thing that baseball's done really well lately, you know, recent years has been marketing its young players, the young stars in this game. Uh, and there's definitely been a trend of, you know, accepting players who are more, um, you know, more excited on the field, right? Whether it's, you know, showboating after the home run or... To, do you think that was good by baseball? Do you think they've done a good job promoting the young stars in this game? Was it smart for them to move away from, you know, full-time fans who were cranky seeing that type of, you know, personality on the field? You know, I'm always a fan of, you know, it's kind of, how can you not, you know, grow the game around these young stars we have? There's so many guys that... You know, I couldn't imagine being the being in the league at 20 years old, 21, 22. Like that's that's so tremendous. You know, that's such an accomplishment, and you know, to be able to do what they do up here. You know, I, I think of Tatis and Vladdy Jr. What Bo Bichette's doing over there, um, it, it's something special. So I think, you know, growing the game around those guys that are going to be in this league for 10, 15 years is is the right way to go. So you can kind of have a fan base kind of grow around those guys, and they'll follow the game for 10, 15 years. They'll tell other people about it, and. I think it was the right move for sure. Aaron, thanks so much. You're welcome, guys. Oh, it's it's an incredible honor, um, incredible opportunity here to represent the Yankees, represent the Pinstripes. Um, you know, also represent the fans that voted me in. That's that's something pretty special. Um, you know, I never want to take it for granted. You know, it's a special opportunity. You know, you never know how many All-Star games, if any, that you'll get into. You know, so being able to come here to Denver and and represent is it means a lot to me. I can't even really describe it. What are you looking forward 
two moves in the game this year? Uh, just a competition, seeing some guys I haven't really, you know, had a chance to see. You know, a lot of these NL guys that um, we got a lot of good players out here. You know, and just looking forward to meeting some of these guys, playing against them, and you know, like I was saying earlier, it's kind of picking. I'm gonna try to pick Shohei's brain a little bit on some of his mechanics and what he does at the plate, because you know what he's doing right now is uh, it's it's out of this world. So it's uh, just looking forward to meeting the guys. How is your season going so far, and what do you expect in the second half of the season? Um, season need, you know, just me personally, you know, a lot of room for improvement, you know, from the defensive side of it to the offensive side of it. Um, you know, I got to continue to work hard at, you know, driving guys in, moving guys over, getting on base for my team. And um, I think this second half, you know, we're going to have a, I think the Yankees are going to have a big, big second half. You know, if everybody just continues to do their job and work hard, you know, I think we'll be where we want to be at the end of the year. Can you give us a show's message to the baseball fan in Japan to the camera, please? What's up, everybody? Um, just hope you guys tune in to the All-Star Game, Home Run Derby. There's, it's going to be quite a show. Thank you very much. Yeah, have a good one, guys. Thank you. I'm good. How you doing? For sale. Best advice you've ever given. Don't sweat, you know, don't sweat your stats, you know. Just do whatever you can for the team and your stats will be there. Best gift you've ever been given. Wow. Best gift. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's too many to even count. I can't even I can't even give you one. Um, <laughs> we'll come back. Best away we'll stadium. Best the stadium. Uh, LA, Dodgers, and Anaheim. Those are two of my favorites. Best superstition you've ever witnessed? Um, superstitions. No, I see how certain guys, you know, put on their uniform. You know, they got to put a certain sock on a certain way. They don't wash certain things. Um, there's, there's too many. Best post game meal. I like any Mexican food. We usually get some pretty good tacos or enchiladas or stuff like that. Best temperature to play in. Ooh. Like I said, playing out in LA or it's you know 70 degrees and sunny, can't beat that. Um, Barry Bonds. I got a Willie Mays signed ball and picture. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Aaron, we had some uh, some game and video game uh, questions for you. Okay. Some of the Yankees are big gaming uh, guys. Ten year old Gregory Soto. You know, you know, you know, What's your favorite, favorite video game? game? What would you think? Favorite current video game? I got two. I can't just pick one. Um, FIFA 21 and um, Call of Duty. Those are the top two for me. Your favorite game of all time? Were you a pitcher? See, I grew up on Nintendo, so I was a big Legend of Zelda guy. So any Legend of Zelda games was was my go-to. <laughs> uh, PlayStation right now, but I'm I'm kind of all three. I got I got the Switch, I got the Xbox, I got the new PlayStation. It's uh, I think I got kind of a problem. So, so you know you guys are competitive with your gaming. Who's the best gamer on the year? <laughs> wow, best gamer's got to be Gleyber Torres. Gleyber Torres, Jiro Shella, um, Odor, all three of those guys, they, uh, they're uh, they on another level. <laughs> what, uh, what do you currently listen to music-wise uh, pre-game? What's your pre-game playlist? Uh, pre-game, you know, J. Cole, his new album has kind of been on repeat. Anything with Drake, Meek Mill, just something to kind of get me hyped for the game. Appreciate it, guys. There you go. Yeah. So, going into the game, are there any players that you don't really look forward to playing with? Or perhaps running? You know, playing with, uh, I think, you know, Shohei, you know, a lot of the guys with the Red Sox, you know, Martinez, you know, Devers, Bogarts, what they've been doing. Um, 
to play against. You know, I'm excited to see what Tatis does on the other side. You know, Tatis, Story, all those guys, they're, uh, you know, special talents. Um, you know, they can, they can change the game with one swing, one play on defense, anything, you know, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'll, I'll try my best in the All-Star game. You know, we'll see what happens, you know. But, you know, past couple series, um, we've won a couple here now, and um, I think we're having the right momentum leading into the second half. So hopefully we can kind of keep that train rolling. Awesome. Do you have any kind of specific goals or expectations for your Um, you know, I, last, last All-Star game got a homer. You know, maybe let's try to make it two. We'll see. Anytime. Aaron, the legend of Otani grows. We found out that he doesn't even take batting practice most of the time. How do you feel like that might affect him tonight in the home run derby? Is that something that you maybe ever considered taking after him, considering what he's been doing the last couple of years? You know, I heard that when we played him, uh, when they came to New York to play us. I was one of our old. Um, bullpen coach is, is over there with them now and he said yeah like I'm throwing to Otani in the derby but he doesn't even take BP so we'll see we'll see how this works but uh, now he's just a guy that knows what he needs to do he's got his he gets his mechanic, mechanics down in the in the cage and goes to work so I think it'll be fine once he steps out on that field it's gonna be just like any other day for him I think. Aside from Otani who do you think is gonna who's your dark horse for the Man, my dark horse is going to be Trey Mancini. I've played against him, you know, since the minor leagues, and I know what kind of power he has. He's got power to all fields. Uh, I've seen what he can do in the game, you know, so I think he's going to be the one that, you know, I know, you know, Joey Gallo is getting a lot of talk for, for you know, obviously the power he's had, uh, Otani. Um, but I think Trey Mancini is going to surprise a couple people. I'm hoping, you know, I'm pulling for him. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Judge, somebody found your Spotify playlist, and I'm pretty sure it's yours. Post-game victory playlist only had like two or three songs. Can we uh, add to that? And what would you add to that? Yeah, if I got. We need a little bit more than that. Yeah, I got about three. You know, post-game win playlists awesome. so oh okay it's kind of like it's multiple playlists so okay. a couple i'm working on i think the one they saw i'm kind of working on there's another one with maybe 10 to 12 on there we'll, we'll see you know so it's a constant you know if i hear a song i'm like okay add it that's a post game or this one's a pregame. you know so i i'm a big music guy so i like to mess around with that are you controlling the music in the clubhouse or who has that responsibility as a team I try to. Um, I try my best with that. You know, Odor and Glaber kind of picked up for me a couple times too. You know, they're big music guys as well, so it's uh, it's kind of a little rotation. Perfect. And I'm doing a selfie. Sorry, I have to do this. My favorite player. <laughs> Thanks. Anytime. So, Aaron, um, what have, I'm from here in Denver. Um, what have you heard about Coors Field and playing at altitude? You know, I haven't been, they haven't really told me much about it. You know, I've heard from other players, you know, talking with LeMahieu, um, who's with us. Like you said, man, it'll, it'll get you, you know, if you're not, it'll kind of put a toll on the body a little bit. And even, you know, Stanton says they usually have like some oxygen tanks down, you know, underneath. You know, for guys after you hit like a, a triple or hit, you know, you're running the bases the first to home or something like that, they'll kind of hook you up there. So it'll, um, I'm excited to see how BP goes and how kind of tolling it is on the body. Is there, um, is, is there some kind of truth to there be maybe being an advantage for playing at a ballpark like this where the visiting team comes in and they're going to feel it? Do you think that could be something that could be played up to, to play at such great heights? Maybe, but then I think it also might, you know, be kind of taxing on that home team when you're playing 82 games here. You know, instead of being in, you know, LA and beautiful weather, no altitude like that, and you know, so I think it might kind of go both ways. Those opposing teams that come in and aren't ready for it kind of get a shock to the system, and then the home team that has to play here, you know, 82 times, it kind of puts a toll on your body. Thank you. Have fun. Hey, I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Obviously, none of the Astros are here. Do you think that if they had been on any any awkwardness or you know, it's tough to say. You know, I, I don't think so because you know, this is a time where we celebrate the game. You know, we celebrate everybody's accomplishments. You know, it's that's a tough room to get into. You know, being here at the All Star Game and being in that clubhouse, that's a tough room to get into. You know, so I don't think you know guys would really be holding that over anybody's head. You know, it's not the time and place. I feel like so. Um, no, I don't. I don't think so. There's a I've been guys opting out. Obviously. Yeah, I think I think that plays a big role into it, especially 
you know, everything that happened with COVID in 2020 and the shortened season and now now coming back to playing 162, like, that's a big shock on the system, you know. So I think it's smart that a lot of guys, you know, if they think it's right to, you know, stay back and rest up, that's a, that's the right move to do. You know, it's, 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 it's their career. You know, they only get one chance at doing this. So, um I know the fans are probably upset that some of their favorite guys aren't here, but hey, you know, do whatever's you know right for you and your team and your family. Thank you. You're welcome. Aaron, give us some uh, perspective. Tomorrow, what do you think you've noticed the difference in these last like three to four weeks since Major League Baseball cracked down on this is just like from the pitches that you're seeing, right? from the break on these breaking balls, from the rise on these four seamers. Like, is it a noticeable difference to you? I've noticed a little. A, a little bit of a difference, um, but it's tough to say because the guys are still throwing 100, they're still throwing 98, they still got wipeout <laughs> stuff, you know. So it's kind of tough to say that, you know, that's the reason why you know so many guys were good, you know, because this league is filled with so many talented guys and talented arms. So, you know, there might be a couple, a couple pitches I've seen that have kind of not been the same, but for the most part, you know, it's it's still all the same. Yeah, that, that was a big thing I noticed. I felt like the breaking pitches, not really the fastballs, but the breaking pitches really, uh, every year I felt like getting a little sharper, a little sharper. And I think now you're kind of seeing a couple more off-speed pitches kind of roll out of the hand and kind of back up a little bit. How much of a difference do you think it will make? That's my last question. How much of a difference do you think it will make? Ultimately. I think, well, ultimately, like we're seeing some teams. I think the Dodgers scored 20 runs the other night, and um, I think we're going to see, especially in the second half, maybe some, you know, some better offensive games. I think the first half was kind of led by with uh, no hitters, and, you know, low scoring games, but I think the second half will be filled with some big scoring games. Thanks, Richard. You're Latin welcome. America, Latin America and the Caribbean, the New York Yankees is the number one team. We saw a video of you singing Merry Christmas in Spanish. Do you mind sending a message to all of the Latino Yankee fans all over the world? Uh, my Latin Yankee fans, I uh, appreciate you guys rooting for us and cheering us on. You know, we love your support, you know, all around the world. You guys are the best. That's why we're, you know, you guys are the best fans in the world. You always support us no matter what. So thank you, and uh, let's keep it rolling. I don't know, just follow up for the UK, memories of, of London and a message for the British fans, because they love having you there. Wow. Uh, that was, you know, a memory I'll never forget. Uh, you fans out there, the time I had with my family, it's something we'll never forget. It was awesome. and. Hopefully we can go back here soon. You know, I miss you guys. <laughs> you got a message for the Caps off that's our show in the UK, our audience who watch you and cheer for you. Hey, what, what's the what, Caps. Caps off? Yeah, Caps off fans, everybody. Um, appreciate you guys tuning in and rooting us on, and you know, all you fans around the world. You, know, you guys are the best, and, and thank you, thank you. Aaron, thank you so much. I appreciate, I appreciate it, guys. Too.